Good morning. Hey, happy Fire Friday. <laughs> uh, it is Rapid Fire Friday. Facebook and hi to our friends on Instagram. Tanja here. I am a leadership and mindset specialist. Erin, pure, straight out the gate. How are you? Good morning, my love. I'm a leadership and mindset specialist for real estate um, leaders and teams that really want to grow themselves and their people in the least amount of time. Uh, and if you're joining in and you're not in real estate, then that's awesome too. All are welcome. And Rapid Fire Friday. G'day, Kate. Good morning. Great to see you here. Congratulations, Kate, achieving a one-month milestone of getting up at the crack of dawn. Well, not so much the crack of dawn, but really early. <clears throat> G'day, Lou. Good morning. And completing four weeks of walking every morning. Four kilos lost in four weeks. Complete commitment. Uh, amazing effort, honey. Well done. <clears throat> Good morning. Thanks for the love heart, Erin. So what is Rapid Fire Friday? Well, as a peak performance coach, I get to coach amazing people every single week. And there's lots of key themes and lessons. And I know many of you perhaps don't have the resources to invest in a one-on-one -on -one coach. So I just distill the key themes and do rapid fire shares of some of the stuff that we covered this week. And hopefully you get something for yourself. G'day, Wayne. Great to have you here. <clears throat> Some good news, Kate. I did send you a message. It looks like the dates may work. So um, that could be super cool. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get straight into it. First of all, tell me how you are. Just, just, just type in one word. One word that describes how you are right now. Are you tired? Are you excited? Are you inspired? Are you overwhelmed? Are you bored? Where are you at? Just type in one word uh, and let me know how you are feeling right now. Joanne Dank. Hey, Joanne Dank. Nice to see you here. Hey, Brendan. Good to see you here. Exhausted. Erin's exhausted. Okay, I've got a great strategy that's going to help you with your exhaustion, but my first thing that I get for you is make sure you're hydrated. Make sure you are drinking enough water, at least two water, um, two, I was going to say two kilos, two liters a day. Chris Cotton's in. Travis. Flat. Travis is flat. Okay. Well, listen, typically um, Monday is where I do Mindset Mastery Monday. And um, that's where it's quite interactive. And, you know, you ask questions and I answer. I'm really happy to answer some questions today once I share some of the stuff. But um, f uh, flat, there's some flat people out there. Let me ask you, why are you flat, guys? Is it the market? Is it the sales or lack thereof? Is it you're tired? Why are you flat? This is a good question. Why are you guys flat? How are you feeling? Luxury travel. <clears throat> Hi, luxury travel. 911. It's an emergency that I travel. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me know. You guys are flat. Well, let, let me hopefully fuel your fire today for Rapid Fire Friday. Um, too much work, Erin's saying. So she's exhausted. There's too much work. Travis and Joanne are flat. Let's, 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 inspire you today let's let's get you some mojo so you can enjoy your friday and your weekend let's get stuck straight into it so if you um if you're not driving or you're not walking and you have pen and paper handy i want you to write some notes for yourself and see if there's one takeaway that you can take out today slower sales yeah i hear you joanne listen the election is tomorrow hopefully the outcome of the election has people confident in their decisions that they can make for their future so let's let's hope that we really see some activity happen after the election. Uh, Mary, good day, Mary. Um, bored. Mary's bored. Ugh, listen, Mary, I actually hear you. I really get it. Um, I was feeling a bit bored too. I've got an awesome life, a really dynamic life, but I was kind of reflecting on, I was feeling a bit bored. And here's what I know, Mary, and anyone else that's kind of feeling flat or bored or uninspired, out walking and pumped. Go Wayne. Okay, Wayne's feeling pumped. <clears throat> Happiness really occurs when we have something to look forward to. And if there's nothing really to look forward to or no new experiences, Mary, then we can kind of feel bored because it's occurring as same old, same old. Does that make sense? So I did a really bold thing yesterday. I was interviewing Steve Carroll, who's the creator of Digital Live Ride, and uh, Valerie Timms, who's a real estate leader in South Australia and a great client of mine. And we were talking about the Digital Live Ride experience where 
just under 30 real estate professionals rode 500 kilometers across Thailand to raise funds for orphaned kids in Thailand. It was an amazing experience. They've launched the dates for 2020. And I said, yes, I'm like, I'm in, I'm a yes. And here's what happened for me, Mary, instantly. I was all flushed because I was a bit confronted because it's my daughter's um, VCE year and I want to be available for her. And as, as it happens, her 18th is on the dates that the, the schedule is. So we're just trying to work it out because I'm committed to being here for my daughter's 18th. Anyway, long story short, Mary, here was my experience straight away. I was happy. I was excited. And I tell you why. It's because I had something amazing to look forward to in my future. So the key to happiness is progress. If you have something in your future to look forward to, hello, show for nanny, then um, that will really make a difference. Does that make sense? So Mary, let me ask you, do you have anything in your future near, far, or, you know, within the next 12 months future to look forward to. And if not, I really invite you to check your bucket list and put something into existence so you can actually have something to look forward to. And why not wait six months? Why not create something to look forward to every single day? Because really, it's a miracle we're even here. One in 14 trillion chance of actually even being alive. So what's something you can look forward to? Hey, Travis. Oh, Travis has tagged Liam and um, I don't know how to, uh, Russell and Goey, is that the right how to, way, way to say it? Hey, Kate. So I'm asking everyone, how are you feeling? Some are feeling flat, some are exhausted, Wayne is pumped. So Mary, tell me, what would be something that you could do that it would give you something to look forward to? I'm, I'm genuinely interested to know. And who's here? Marina Mara. Hello, Marina. How are you, beautiful? So Rapid Fire Friday, I'm going to reflect now top key themes of my coaching, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching this week. The first one I want to share with you is this. Stuff, things, you know, things, whatever it is, simple things or whatever, it's not going to make us happy. I did a coaching session with a principal who runs a, you know, a, a solid business. His break-even figure every four weeks is 200000 so that gives you a, a sense of the size of the business. And this guy has just bought a new car. He's just uh, built a new home. He uh, is a developer. Uh, he has a significant size business. He has some fancy toys. And, and the, the beautiful soul is depressed. And we got to distinguish because he's like, I just, I just feel like crap. And, and, you know, he too, like many of you are feeling flat because of the, the lack of sales flow that's happening. G'day, Mickey. Great to see you here. Just back from Everest. Oh my God, Kate, can't wait to hear. Type in, what was your biggest lesson, Kate, of your journey to Everest? Kate's migrated from Facebook to Instagram. <clears throat> Kate Ashton, that is. I don't care where you are, Kate, as long as you're here. I love you. So, all the stuff, he has all the stuff, yet he's experiencing flat, overwhelm, depression, and kind of just wants to walk away from it all. You know, as a family and marriage and all of that. And here's what I unpacked with him. See, most of us, the 7 billion of us on the planet, most of us are busy being human doings versus human beings. What do I mean by that? When we operate in life, go, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to have the body, have the man, have the woman, have the money, have the house, have the car, have the job, have the career, have the status, have the things, have the that. <sighs> And then to be happy. And that is exhausting. That can be a lot of force. And it actually is working against universal flow. So most of us are walking around being human doings. What do I need to do to have the perfect thing and the conditions and the outcomes and the status or the success or the stuff? And then I'll be happy. And have you ever experienced going for a goal and achieving it and not being happy and fulfilled? Kate, I'm keen to hear what you're, you're climbing the um, summit of Everest. Um, gratitude. Yeah, well, that's a great way to feel happy in the moment. Have you ever gone for an award and you've won the award and you have a temporary party pop experience and then you just back to meh, flat? You know, I know I have, you know, years ago in the past before I was doing all this mindset stuff. And here's what it is. When we are relying on external things or circumstances or people or situations to complete the jigsaw puzzle of us, it can be a very shallow experience. The way we are designed to work and the way the universe works and the way Mother Nature works is we show up as a human being. 
So who are we being? Our being determines the actions we take or don't take, which completely influences the results that we produce or don't produce. But here's the interesting thing. Every single week, no matter who I'm you know, coaching, an executive director, principal, leading agent, we are, let me know by an emoji if this is making sense for you, if you're understanding what I'm saying here. I'm coaching people and we're unpacking their flatness, their exhaustion, their frustration, their annoyance, their overwhelm. And when we look at their states across all areas of their life, that's generally who they're being. But we tend to blame the external circumstances to why we're being that way. Does that make sense? If this makes sense to you, please type in hell yes or not nah, don't get it so I know where we're at. So most of us are addicted to being a human doing, trying to get the conditions and situations and stuff in our life sorted so then we can be happy. It's an empty experience. We never arrive at the destination of happiness. We must be mindful of who we're being now. And as Kate said, she's grateful. So having an attitude of gratitude will definitely you know, impact your altitude, your experience, the energy that you have. So... Who are you being? This is the question I invite you to look at for yourself today. Who are you being right now? Are you being flat? Are you being frustrated? Are you being bored? There's a great saying if someone says, you know, I'm bored. Um, I remember as a kid someone saying to me, uh, you know, you're the chairman and we're all bored or something. It's like bored is a state. Bored is a choice. And you need to create something inspiring for you to live into. So who are you being? Your being will influence whether you take action in areas of life that are important to you or not, and that will absolutely influence the results that you have. So take a look today at who you're being. That's tip number one. Now, I did a really great session, so I want to hear what you want to get from you. What did you get from that first distinction? I did a coaching session yesterday for a team of three. The principal couldn't actually make it, but his two um, assistants made it, and it was phenomenal. We spent two hours together, but one of the key lessons that they got, which was unreal, was they weren't hitting their prospecting targets. If you're, if you're a leader, listen to this for your team, by the way. And if you're a leading agent, then listen to this for yourself. They weren't hitting their daily prospecting or weekly prospecting targets. And when I asked them the reason that they weren't hitting their designed targets to fulfill on their result of hitting over a million dollars for the financial year, they said, of course, time. Most people say time. Um, by the way, is time a struggle for you? Who's this? Mary Richmond's giving us a whoop, whoop. Thanks, Mary. So you struggle with time? Well, listen to this and see if this makes sense <clears throat> for you. And I said, okay, well, where are you spending your time? And the first thing that came out of both of their mouths was we, you know, drops. We do a 1,000 drops each uh, a week. And I said, okay, so why are you doing drops? And they said, well, because we have to. And I said, okay, well, why don't you get somebody else to, who, you know, to put a piece of paper in a letterbox where you could actually use that 14 hours a week collectively that you're using to drop, uh, you know, seven hours each to um, make more calls. And they're like, no, the principal really loves drops. So we, I ended up breaking down the cost to the business. Now, here's what was interesting. Over a year... The cost of having somebody that's not a you know real estate expert, it putting letterbox drops in the letterboxes for you know two thousand letterboxes for forty eight weeks of the year was nine thousand six hundred dollars. If we free up those two real estate specialists and have them prospecting and calling for those hours that they're no longer dropping, we would generate minimum, this was a really conservative figure, but a minimum of $80,000 in GCI for the year, plus attract 160 new people from the open for inspections for our database, plus the value of the boards and the marketing and the exposure, plus 16 new reviews on Rate My Agent from vendors and buyers, plus referrals. And here's the other interesting thing. I also asked them, I said, so how much downtime is there when you have to change and freshen up after the hours of letterbox dropping that you do? And they added it up. And the cost to the principal for these two ladies to put pieces of paper in letterboxes per week in the just the getting changed and freshening their armpits and tying their hair up was $500 a week in just no activity. This is a get changed and freshen their armpits and they just laughed and I said listen I want you to take this value proposition back to your principal and ask him who's a great client and mate of mine 
Listen, would you spend $9,600 in the business to make $80,000, get 160 people on our database, 16 reviews and referrals and save $500 a week? It's a no brainer. Does that make sense by the way, what I'm saying? So please, if you're in your business or you run a business, have a look at all the activity and make sure that you're getting maximum return on investment from all of your resources in your business and be creative because in when times are tough and sales aren't being turned over as much as possible, you've got to dial increase and reduce expenses. Please don't just do things the way you've done them because that's the way you've done them. The definition of insanity, as Einstein said, is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Go through your expenses, go through your profit and loss statement and be ruthless and question and challenge. Do we really need that? Do we need, really need to spend that money? And how can we get someone cheaper to do that task so I can get dollar productive stuff happening out of you? Does that make sense? Uh, let me know with a thumbs up if you get that. All right, this one's a good one. If you are feeling overwhelmed uh, and, and don't know what to do. Yesterday I had a couple of principals, a uh, husband and wife team. They run a great business and they got on the call and they're close to tears. Actually, they were in tears. Complete overwhelm. They are just completely overhauling their business using the three steps for success. They're raising their standards simplifying their strategies and they're elevating their state but the deal is they're working in the business and on the business themselves who else is working in the business and on the business let me know by typing are you in and on or just in or just on uh, and also let me know are you watching this live or are you watching the record because it's great to know cheers <laughs> mm. now they're just tears in their eyes and overwhelmed. And I said, guys, what's the source of your overwhelm? And they just feel like they're being pulled from pillar to post, doing too much. Everyone wants a piece of them. And here is what I recommended they do. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, do this for yourself tonight with a glass of wine or a green tea or over the weekend. Get a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. I've shared this before, but I'll share it again. On the left-hand side, write shoulds. And write down, do a mind dump of all the things you believe you should do, all the things that you tell yourself you should do. Hey, Neil Butler, thanks for tuning in. Everything that you're telling yourself you should do. Travis, I'm having Vegemite on toast. <laughs> Good on you, Travis. Have a bite for me. Joanne, live in and on. Yeah, live and in and on. Yeah, so uh, what are you hearing for yourself, Joanne? Mary, in and on. Okay, so listen for yourself. Actually, Ladies, definitely want to do this next exercise of a should stock take. Live for show for nanny, working in and on. So should stock take, it's unpacking all the shoulds that we have going on in our mind, which creates a lot of noise and amplifies our overwhelm. Piece of paper, line down the middle, write the word shoulds, do a mind dump of all the things you're telling yourself you should do in your business, in your life, to lose weight, to save money, to write a book, to run a marathon, just dump it all in. Thanks, Wayne, in and on. Just dump it all in. You might need a big piece of paper, but I just want you to write it all down, doesn't matter what order, just until you feel empty. And step aside and take a look. Because the subconscious mind is always trying to resolve tension, tease, the eyes and put the lid and pack things up and when we have a whole bunch of incomplete shoulds it's like this huge filing cabinet of incomplete work to do and it's absolutely overwhelming are you with me do you understand what i'm saying here is this a familiar experience for you kate ashton makes sense prospecting has to be a must and i'm going to see the results which will make it all worth it it's a must it's not a should otherwise as tony robbins says we should all over ourselves we say i should do this i should do that i should exercise i should clean my car i should prospect i should call them back i should write a book i should run a marathon Stop with the shooting. Dump it all down. Once you dump it all down and you kind of get it off your chest and out of your head and you look at it, you can start to see one of the reasons why you might be experiencing overwhelm. Then the next piece to do is in the right-hand column, write the word in capital letters, must. Must. And then uh, a little addition to this exercise, do a couple of columns. So what must you do like in the next seven weeks before the end of the financial year? Right? What's just what must you do for the next seven weeks? What must you do in three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months? And as you're going through your shoulds, 
cross out anything that you've been telling yourself that you should do and you're just not going to do it. The book, the marathon, the triathlon, the learn Spanish, the Thai cooking classes, whatever it is, right? Cross out what you just know you've been telling yourself you should do and you're not going to do it. Get rid of those. Then start to look at everything and start to plot it in seven weeks, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months to give you some space and chunk down what's just most important to give you bang for your energetic buck. Does that make sense? And as soon as I shared this with my clients yesterday, and, and I said to them, also, the key to this is to communicate it to your people because one of the things that they were feeling overwhelmed with is their people are coming up with ideas of what they should do as nice people and loving people. Hey, Brooklyn, nice to see you here, my love. Then they are just like feeling like they have to do everything that people, are, you know, their team are saying because they want to keep them happy and they want to make a difference, but they're just feeling like they're being pulled from pillar to post. I said, you need to communicate what the business focuses are, thank your people for their innovation and their ideas and plot where you can effectively do them if it's in alignment with your strategic direction. G'day, Jag, great to see you. So that's a should stock take. So I'm keen to hear, hey, Travis, who would be willing to do a should stock take? Those of you on um, Facebook, write down, I'm doing a should stock take. Those of you on Instagram, please tell me, type in, would you do a should stock take? For those that have just joined, um, watch the recording, you'll know what I'm talking about. It is like spiritual housekeeping. It's like energetic housekeeping. The beautiful thing is you get it out of your head, you, you stop the noise, you have a disassociated relationship with all the tasks, you separate yourself. That's when you can get clarity and discern what's important and what's not important. So let me know if that's something that you would like to do for yourself. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again. A lot of leaders and team members are feeling overwhelmed. Please, leaders, if you're listening to this, it's critical that you empower your people to become leaders themselves. If a lot of your time is being spent on solving other people's problems, it's a huge opportunity for you to empower them. One of the simplest ways I know how to uh, support people to be empowered is the philosophy of got a problem, no problem. Starting now. Oh, so what does it say? Starting Starting now, Show for Nana, you used doing your should stock take now. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? That's awesome. Who Adam, Adam nice to have you here? Uh, tell me by the way, just type in where are you tuning in from? What state or country are you in? Just type it in on Facebook and Insta so I can say good day and know where you're from. All right, Groovy. So um, if people are coming to you, if you're a leader particularly, or even your children are coming to you, if you have kids and uh, they've got problems, you say, got a problem? No problem. Give me two solutions to your own problem. Don't ever let your people come to you with just problems for you to solve. And a lot of leaders do that. And I tell you why, because we want to be liked and lead. And we feel that when we just are there with an open door policy and we can be interrupted any minute and we solve people's problems, that that makes us a likable leader, but it can actually be ineffective and it doesn't teach them how to fish. So my philosophy is got a problem, no problem. Give me two solutions to your own problem. So you can also understand where their thinking is. A, B, you need a roadmap to solve problems and you have core values in your business, invite your people to use the core values as a code of conduct to check how they can solve that problem. For example, if one of your uh, core values is it be innovative or be courageous, you can say, well, I've got this particular problem. Okay, if I was being courageous, uh, I would just pick up the phone and call the person and have a straight conversation. Or if I was being innovative, um, yeah, I would, tr I would use this system differently. It's too clunky or whatever it is. So got a problem, no problem. Give me two solutions to your own problem. Empower your people to solve their own problems and use your values as a little checklist to elicit some solutions for yourself. Uh, Zach, g'day Zach. Great to have you here, Zach. And um, uh, Adam, I've been asking people, how are you feeling? Um, how are you feeling this Friday? The key, the common answer was flat. Wayne said he's amazing. Samantha, hey Samantha, thanks for tuning in. So that's a really great one to empower your people. And finally, I want to end with this one. I've mentioned this before, I'm going to mention this heaps of time, big times because as a peak performance coach, it really all comes down to this. 
I promise you from the core of my heart, no strategy, tool, solution, coach, TED Talk, podcast, book, Kumbaya, retreat, nothing, 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 nothing is going to rock your world, change your paradigm, help you make sustainable money, help you achieve progress in your business and life unless you alter your definition and your belief of yourself as the foundation of your existence. I promise you this. Every single coaching session I do every single week, and those of you who are my clients that are on or you've had a discovery session with me are on, you'll know this. There's no point getting 10 tips for success if the foundation of your, your belief system is that you're not enough you're not worthy and you don't deserve. When you are operating on top of a foundation and a belief system that you're not worthy of success or you don't deserve to be happy or you don't, you're not worthy of the money or the dreams or the woman or the man or the body or the life or the travel that you desire, I can't see a way to achieve it. And there'll be a lot of force activity and no flow. So please, the best place to start to shift the flatness, to shift the overwhelm, to shift the frustration. Um, hey, Sam, I think you wanted to view go live. She wants to go live. Uh, is start with what is your definition of yourself? Because definition is decisive. Does that make sense? Adelaide, Facebook Live, working... Um, Facebook Live, something not on. Ooh. Oh, work in, not on. Okay, great. Thanks, Karen. I appreciate you writing that in. So you must have a look today. That's my invitation with a lot of love. Take a look. What is your current foundation or belief of yourself? Are you operating on top of feeling like you're not worthy and you don't deserve and, and you're not important? And if, if you are, then welcome to being human. Most of us have a, an element of that. But please, please. Put down the whip, less whip, more wand. Put down the whip, wave the wand. Less beating yourself up for what you've done or haven't done. Just stay, start waving the wand of gratitude for yourself, gratitude for your life, gratitude for fresh air, gratitude for the coffee you had and the barista that made it, whatever it is. Please start with your definition of yourself and you feel like, Tanj, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even know what that means. Then book in a complimentary 30-minute discovery session with me. Let's hack into what are you telling yourself. If we don't shift that, no strategy, no business plan, no to-do list, no sh should stock take is going to make any difference. None of what I share on a Mindset Mastery Monday or a Rapid Fire Friday is going to rock your world. Please. You're a miracle that you're even alive. There's 7 billion of us floating around on a rock in space. We don't fall off. <laughs> I know I sound like a child, but I love to keep my mindset innocent like a child because then my imagination just stays open. Do yourself a favour and be kind to yourself. That's my final message today. So I hope you got something that's of value. Stuff not, is not going to make you happy. It's not what you do to get what you want to be happy. It's who you're being. Who are you being today? Start by being kind to yourself. And finally, in the words of Maya Angelou, people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Please do yourself a favor, make yourself feel great today and those around you. And I look forward to seeing you for Mindset Mastery Monday. We're going to do Q&A. What's on your mind? What do you need support with? You ask the questions and I'll answer as best as I can. Much love to you. Have a phenomenal weekend. Have a great day. Thanks, Sam. And uh, let's get this election out the way so people can start making decisions for their future. Lots of love. We'll speak soon. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate your company and I hope you find this content valuable. Let me know if there's anything you need. We'll speak soon and uh, ciao to you, our friends on Facebook.